So here's a car. Yes, that's a car. And the car is coming out of the paper towards you, but it's going around a circle this way. So it's turning. And in fact, let's just say this is the radius of that circle. So here's the center of the circle. Okay. And it's traveling some velocity V. So the question is how fast, I'm sorry, what coefficient of friction is needed to prevent that car from going around, from sliding out of the turn? This is a real, this is a real thing, right? Because if you're designing a road, you want to know um, either what the coefficient of friction is or how fast you can go. And in fact, I, I changed my mind. How fast? Let's say, let's say how fast? Let's say the coefficient of static friction is equal to 0 0.5. And the mass is something, I don't really care. And the radius is, um, I'm going to say 10 meters. So how fast can it go without sliding? So the first step to do is to draw a force diagram. So let me draw my dot right here. And this is going to be my x-axis. And this is my y. So I have the gravitational force. And we always want to think about this. What are the long-range forces? What are the contact forces? So, so this is the only long-range force. Nothing else. There's no electrostatic forces on this. Okay. So what else is touching it? Well, the road. So the road's touching it, so the road pushes up with a normal force. And then the road also has a frictional force. If this car is turning around this way, it wants to slide out that way. So there's actually a force pushing towards the center of the circle, and that is the friction force. Like that. There's your force diagram. Okay. There is no uh, outward pushing force. Okay. There's no force pushing it that way. If you wanted to do that, and don't do it this way, you would say there is a centrifugal force pushing out that way. Okay, but, but I'm going to encourage you not to do that. And yes, I will make a centrifugal force video later because I care about you. Okay, so we want to find out how fast. Uh, let's do our normal thing. Let's say F net Y equals, what's the acceleration in the Y direction? Well, if it stays on the ground, this should be zero. And then F net X is going to be M A X. And I'll go ahead and say this is centripetal acceleration. So this is going to be, I know A C is V squared over R. That's my definition, which we derived a couple videos back. So this is going to be M V squared over R. So let's look at the Y force first. Okay. So in the Y forces, I have N minus mg equals zero. There's no components here. Everything's very simple. It's going to get more complicated later. Okay. I'm going to do two more uh, circular problems like this. So this tells me that n is equal to mg. And who cares about that? You care. Because the magnitude of the friction force is going to be less than or equal to mu static times the normal force. But I want to go as fast as I possibly can. So I'm actually going to use equals the coefficient times the normal force. Okay, so now in the x direction, I have the friction force is equal to m v squared over r. And from that, I can put in the friction force is equal to, I can put in the coefficient of static friction times the normal force is equal to m v squared over r, but n is equal to mg, so I get mu sub s times mg equals m v squared over r. Now I want to solve for v squared, so I get v squared, the masses cancel, equals mu sub s times g over times r. Okay. Now, I told you I put some numbers in, so I'm going to do that. But let's just check, because here I have uh, meters per second squared times meters, and this has no units. So this is meters squared per second squared. That's good. Uh, if I increase the gravitational field, which would be kind of weird, I could actually go around faster, right? Because like, there'd be more friction. There'd be more friction pushing those two cars, the car against the road. If I increase the radius, I actually decrease acceleration, so I could go faster. Okay, so let's, I told you I'd put this in, and I wasn't prepared. So let's put this in, I'll put this in right here, V equals the square root 
of 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 10. Okay, so that's going to be about 100. So that's about 50. So I could guess. So 50 square root of 50 is going to be like, oh boy. Let's see. It has to be 7? Seven, 7-ish. Seven yeah, let's see. No, 20, 22, 22.1. 22 I was thinking 50. Wait, so that's a, 10 times 10 is 100. Oh, I did, that's right, I did 100. I did it's 10. I did it wrong. 7. Yeah. I was right. 7 meters per second. And if you convert that to uh, miles per hour just for fun, Fifteen point seven. Done. There you go.